All right, to continue on with our discussion about variables, this video I'm going to talk about complex data types, mathematical operators, and basic string concatenation. So we have here our variables from before, name, id, alive. I've added a new one here that we're going to use, 5ds, and my console is going to log out name. So right there, the value of the variable name. Now let's say that I wanted to replace the value inside of name. As we did before, we can say this is our new value. So if I saved it and I ran it, there we go. There's the new value being written out. Now if I wanted to add something to the end of this, that's a process known as concatenation, when you're combining multiple strings. I can say that name is going to be equal to now this plus something else. So here I'm taking the former value of the variable name and I'm adding to it, I'm concatenating to it this. There we go. So I'm taking Ricky and then I'm adding a space plus Bobby to get the results. Ricky Bobby. This is known as concatenation. So here we replaced the value that was inside the variable name. So we replaced Steve with Ricky. And then we added to Ricky with space Bobby. Okay, so that's string concatenation. You'll do a lot of that. Mathematical operators, also available to us to work on these simple data types. So I have the variable ID and I'm going to replace it with the number 7 and 3. So I'm combining those and I'm going to write out ID 10. Okay, so as we expected, the result of this expression, this is known as an expression, the stuff on the right hand side is being assigned to the variable on the left hand side. So the computer will solve whatever's over here and then the equal sign means take this value and place it inside of this variable. So that's the mathematical operator for plus. There's also a minus and we can do the same thing we did with the string. Take whatever was inside of it before and I'm going to subtract 2 from it. There it is, 8. And we can also do multiplication, id is equal to id times 4. We can do division, id is equal to id divided by 4. And there's other mathematical operators as well, but we'll get into those in the future. So we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All of those available to us. You can see no errors at all. Back to my 8. All right, complex data types. That's our next section here. These are all simple data types. String, number, boolean. I mean, even if the number has a decimal place, it's still considered this simple data type. Complex data types are objects that have other properties, other things that can be measured. With these simple ones, a boolean. You can't really measure anything about a boolean. It's true, it's false, that's it. Numbers, they're just a number. Things that have other properties, for an example, there is a data type known as an array. An array is a list. So that's my five Ds. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to get rid of all these extra ones. I don't need these anymore. Five Ds is going to be an array. So I'm going to put inside here, let's say we'll do, if I can type it, Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. There we go. That is an array. It's a list. It's a numbered list. There are five elements inside of here. Now, what does what makes this a complex data type? Well, it has properties. Console.log. So if I did five Ds and I 
I wrote this out, it's just going to give me everything that's inside of there. You'll notice it used single quotation marks here instead of double. You can use those interchangeably throughout JavaScript in nearly all cases. If I didn't want to get the string version of all of that, there's a property called length. Five. Length tells me how many elements are inside of this array. If I wanted to target one of the elements inside there, I use square brackets after the variable name, and then I put a number in here. This is known as the index. This is item 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There it is. Number 0 is dodge. And if I want to concatenate here, let's take item number 2, which would be this one. Dodge dip. You'll notice there's no space in between dodge and dip. I just concatenated the two values, those two strings. I concatenated them together. If I wanted, I can also add a space in between them like that. Run this again. There we go. Dodge space dip. That's the value being written out now. So an array is a complex or compound data type because it has other properties that can be measured. It's not just the object itself. There's other things within it that we can get at. So that is a complex data type. There are lots of other ones. There's array, as we've covered here. Um, object is another one. Function is one that we'll be getting to very shortly. Uh, date is another one. And a DOM object. That's the document object model. This has to do with HTML. When you're building with building web pages or manipulating web pages, all the various elements inside that page, we can access all the different parts and all their different properties through what's known as the document object model. That's one of the web APIs that we'll be getting to in a couple of weeks. Okay, so there we go. Um, arrays, basic, basic introduction to them complex versus simple data types, and string concatenation and mathematical operators.